welcome to the Demi Goddess YouTube show. If you're new, please make sure you subscribe so you never miss a video from me as I do drop multiple times a week for you guys. We are going to be unpacking The Real Housewives of Potomac, episode 13, season 14, and we're going to get into some things and we're going to talk about what I saw, okay? But before we get into some things, what I need you guys to do is hit that like button, share the video as well to someone that might like this, and don't forget to comment and communicate with me in the comments because I do respond to people in my comments, okay? So, the episode starts with Ashley comes over to Mia House and they talk about um, the divorce, meaning Ashley divorced with Michael, um, and how she feels. I did like how Mia says, I, I like how Mia says her shady stuff to people to their face. She's not really like a, I'm a talk behind your back type of person. And if she does talk behind your back, she says it to your face. So Mia was just really questioning Ashley and really what was her intent and really trying to figure out what's really going on between Ashley and Michael. I don't really think they're going to be getting a divorce. I think there's going to be some type of arrangement between the two. The only time I really see Ashley getting a divorce is either Michael is going to fall in love with somebody else or Ashley is going to find someone that is just as financial um, stable as Michael. That's the only way I see them two splitting, to be honest. Um, I do see her eventually giving in, you know, um, to his arrangement, his sexual needs and things like that. So that's how I personally feel about the situation. It's just too much back and forth. Divorce is not easy. It does. It is very draining. It is very confusing. And then on top of that, they have kids together. So that's a whole different dynamic. It makes it a little bit more harder, you know, um, and just to like process the divorce in real time. I definitely understand what Ashley is saying, but Michael has put her through hell and back. I just don't understand, you know. And has embarrassed her on numerous occasions. So if she wants to deal with that, then, hey, all we could do is sit back and watch it and, and see how everything unfolds and which are the best. Okay. So later on in the episode, Robin is doing a Dominican Republic trip and everyone is invited. So I thought that was very mature of her. I thought that was very grown of her because I was like, if she does some shady stuff and doesn't invite Candace and Wendy, we could just go ahead and kick her off the show because I'm just so sick and tired of the colorism. I'm so sick and tired of the double standards. I'm so sick and tired of you not disclosing what's really going on in your life, but you're on a reality show. You know, you could just go, you know? That's how I'm really feeling about the situation. So now NECA and Wendy, they go out for lunch. So this is later on in the episode. NECA wanted to squash the beef. Wendy explained how she was offended by NECA. Wendy wasn't having, you know, the excuses that NECA was um, giving her at the lunch or whatever you want to call it. NECA was... She was sort of being an issue. Wendy didn't like... The witch comment, so she admitted that. She also said she didn't she didn't want peace and walked off. NECA said she wanted to apologize, but Wendy wasn't trying to receive the apology. She was willing to give, and she started crying. Here's my thing. I said this before when it came to NECA. You know, the more I start watching, you know, The Real Housewives of Potomac, I am starting to have a soft spot for NECA, but I'm still looking at NECA's side eye because... You didn't have to come on the show um, having beef with your former Nigerian sister. You didn't have to. You didn't have to come on to the Real Housewives of Potomac doing that and stirring that pot and having that drama. And you know, it's bigger than just you coming onto the show for whatever the reasons, vanity, popularity, whatever. You know, you have a responsibility being a black woman on reality TV, especially on The Real Housewives of Potomac. The Real Housewives franchise is not a ghetto franchise, okay? There might be some ghetto moments. There might be some chaotic moments. But overall, everyone knows, like, The Real Housewives of Potomac, the not Potomac, just the franchises in general, is built off of class, is built off, off of el uh, elegancy, is built off of, you know, high standards is built off of class you know um for you to come onto the show and then for you to be a poor representation of nigerian uh boys and and girls um it's it's not that 
it's very distasteful. And you didn't have to do that. But one thing that I will give you the benefit of the doubt, NECA, is the more I watch the show, the more I'm like, okay, you have a soft spot. I just kind of feel like maybe the producers or production, I don't know who told you to roll on to Real Housewives of Potomac like that, but you need to disassociate yourself with people like that. And you really need to be careful being friends with Giselle and Robin because they'll flip on you like a hot cake. So, um, and they'll deflect the hell out of what's going on with you to avoid them disclosing what's going on in their life. So I just felt like she should have came on more of an alliance than an enemy. And, you know, I already, you guys look at my previous uh, reviews on this. It's already bad enough. They already be thinking um, African traditional t religions are the devil. And, uh, you know, it has a negative connotation to it. And for you to perpetuate that for the masses, this is aired on national TV. For you to do that, I just feel like was very distasteful. But I am giving you the benefit of the doubt because I do sense you do have a good spirit. I just feel like whoever stirred you the wrong way, you need to get rid of them out of your life. Okay. So I am kind of changing how I feel towards NECA. It is what it is. But, you know, you can't fake being a good person. It just seems like she came onto the show clout chasing. And it just put a bad taste in my mouth and probably others as well. Okay. So um, later on in the episode, you have a scene with Chris and Candace. They talk about how she's, uh, Chris talks about how she's always gone. Um, since her career has been taken off, you know, um, she's been really working hard on her music, really working hard on her acting, getting a lot of roles. Um, she's getting a lot of press and uh, it seems like she isn't taking it serious because the roles are flipped now. I don't know if you guys remember, but in previous seasons when Chris was really working very hard, rather it was his restaurant, rather it was the hotel, Candace was complaining about Chris about working so much and not making time for her and she was crying and starting issues with him and it just seems like now that the roles are reversed it's kind of like eh, okay whatever you know she does have a little bit of self-centeredness about her that I don't really like um she was someone that I didn't really like uh for the longest but she has definitely grown on me I would say like the last two to three seasons it seemed especially since her relationship with her mother seems to be improving too even her mother started growing on me as well but I always like Candace Ma. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I just feel like she should pay attention more to her husband and vice versa. And they really need to stop doing that tip for tap stuff. I know it's probably not on purpose, but it does come off in a bad light. Okay. So Giselle, um, daughter graduates high school. It's no secret. She's going to be attending college in Florida. So that was very exciting. So you have a little scene with that. Robin, Mia, and Neca meet up, and they talk about Karen and Mia's situation. And then they talk about Wendy and Neca's situation. <sighs> it's just exhausting. I don't really want to go into detail about it. It's just it is what it is. So, towards the end of the episode, the ladies go to the Dominican of Republic. Giselle crowned Neca the new Grand Dame of Potomac. Candace walks off. She doesn't want to be a part of any of the negativity because... She just feels like Giselle and Robin and some of the other ladies, they're just negative, you know, and just starting issues. It's no secret that Karen has been crowned the Grand Dame of Potomac, but that was Giselle being messy as her typical miserable self and trying to get under Karen's skin, making NECA the new Grand Dame because of how Karen allegedly said that NECA lives on the north side of Potomac and Karen no longer owns property in Potomac. So it was just all being a mess. I mean, are we really surprised that Giselle did that? But anyways, so that is the conclusion of the episode. I hope you guys like this review. Let me know how you guys feel about this. Do you like them? Do you not like them? I really would be interested to know, you know, what are you guys thoughts? I want to know, but I'll see you guys soon. Peace and blessings. Thank you so much. Make sure you subscribe.